Well, data from sensors needed to find critical minerals for the energy transition can now be transmitted by a satellite. That means that more data can be collected, transmitted in a faster time, leading to more minerals being discovered. Joining us live now with more is Flavia Tata Nadini from Fleet Space Technologies. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Now, in simple terms, we can all understand. Just tell us a bit more about how this works and what sort of minerals we're actually talking about here. Thanks, Ashley. I will try to explain it to you, not in rocket science word. Very, very easy. <laughs> so the world is going through a big change. We need to look and try to find a lot of critical minerals that are the basic for the most important things, like electric cars, solar panels. You're talking about lithium, copper, cobalt, nickel, that are hidden, you know, in the in the subsurface of the earth. These minerals are critical to reach net zero, really important. In our fleet, uh, we we kind of very passionate about this reaching net zero and helping Earth. And we wanted to find a, a technology that could allow us to find critical minerals without per se digging, without per se extracting, without knowing and increasing the efficiency. So we use satellites. Um, they're called small satellites. So they are very small. They are more or less like a, a, a pizza box. They go into space, um, they gather data from remote areas and from devices that we put on the ground. These devices listen to the earth noise and find minerals, even many, many kilometers deep. Um, and now fleet from beautiful Adelaide is working all around the world in five continents to kind of accelerate this look for critical minerals because this is what humankind now needs and what earth really needs to to get to a better place for our planet. So we, um, yeah, we are the front run of this technology and it's quite, quite proud to, you know, to call Australia home. And look, Adelaide is pretty well placed to do all of that, isn't it? I see that you've raised millions and millions of, of dollars in investment recently. Has a lot of that been from international investors keen to, to get involved? Obviously, Australia is a, a leader when it comes to some of these minerals and, and the, the mining sector more broadly. I, I totally agree. So first of all, you need to know that Adelaide is the centre of the space agency. So our space, it's a space city. It's a little you know, Houston of the Southern Hemisphere. But on the other hand, Fleet managed to attract so far almost $100 million. You know, we closed just a $50 million round with investors all over the world. And it's exactly what you said. You know, it's high technology, space, machine learning, and experience in mining, kind of bringing years of years of mining experience to the next level, bringing tech in the picture, bringing new technologies, and yeah, Australia seems to be better than Silicon Valley to do that. So we are very proud. <laughs> and Flavia, you should be very proud about something else. I'm told that you were named the Female Space Leader of the Year recently at the Australian Space Awards. So congratulations to you on that. Without being modest, just, just tell us a bit about how you got there, how you got into this field in the first place and, and how you think Australia is going in terms of getting girls into STEM, getting women involved in what is obviously such a, a growing um, sector for, for Australia. Thank you so much for the congratulations. You know, I didn't even manage to go there and see the award that was such a, because I'm almost like eight months pregnant and I couldn't fly. So, you know, the juggling between success and motherhood is always something that we have to do as women, don't we? But listen, I'm an Italian rocket scientist that came to this country 10 years ago, and I'm very, very glad I did. Um, I am a CEO, I'm a founder, I'm a rocket scientist, I'm a woman, I'm a mom, many, many hats, uh, but I love it. And it is, as you said, without being modest, it's a hard journey, uh, particularly technology, space tech, finding minerals, doesn't get more complicated than that. But I'm very passionate about women uh, in tech, women in C-suites, um, it is a topic that I really love. I try to do my best to encourage um, more women and little girls as possible girls to get passionate about it. I've got myself two girls <laughs> and they love space and they want to become astronauts, so they are on the right track. I think uh, something is changing in this country. When I came here 10 years ago, me doing this is very special. Now it's starting to be normal and this is what I want to see.
because there is no reason why we as women, as mom, as as I'm not, we cannot be as ambitious and as achieve as, as high and anyone else. So I am very curious what's gonna happen in the next 10 years because the past 10 years have been incredible. Flavia, it's not every day we get to speak with a legitimate rocket scientist. So really appreciate you making the time and, and sharing with us what you're up to. It all sounds fascinating. We really appreciate you taking the time and congratulations again on the award. It's um, yeah, something to be proud of.